Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over RNS configurations. This is a practice problem on a homework I was given. Uh, so we are asked to assign RNS configurations to all of the chiral centers uh, in the following compounds. Below you'll notice we have a line angle structure here, uh, but in compound B we have a Fisher projection. Uh, so step one for identifying, we're going with molecule A to start. Um, we have to identify the chiral centers. Well, let's look at all the carbons because we know that if we want to find the chiral centers, a chiral center is um, a part of the carbon chain that has four unique branches coming off of it, right? Four unique. They cannot be the same. So because of that, uh, this carbon here is not a chiral center because look at this, the chlorine, the chlorine. There's two identical groups, so that's not a, um, a chiral center. Uh, this one has a different problem. It has only three groups because of the carbonyl oxygen, right? And that makes it achiral. Uh, the nitrogen here only makes three bonds. And if we look here, uh, this makes four bonds, right? If we have a hydrogen implied as a wedge, we have an alcohol. We have the right whole side of this molecule, we have the left whole side of this molecule, and we have that hydrogen. So we know that this is a chiral center. On the other hand, let's look here. We have um, this OH coming towards us and H as a wedge uh, implied here. We have the right and the left of the molecule, right? So we know that this is also a chiral center, right? Because it has that four different groups coming off of it. We wouldn't count any of the benzenes because it only makes three bonds. It's sp2 hybridized, right? And uh, over here, not really, right? Uh, this nitrogen is only making three bonds. So, or, yeah, not three bonds. It only has three different groups. It's sp2 hybridized. Um, so the next step is to draw the implied hydrogens with their respective stereochemistry. So we identified this one as a chiral center and this carbon as a chiral center. Um, and what we'll notice is there's... Um, this alcohol here is dashed, right? So that means that this hydrogen needs to be wedged to follow the Vesper theory. Um, and same with this one. This one is a wedge, right? This oxygen or this um, OH group is a wedge, right? So we need to make it dashed hydrogen here for that implied hydrogen. Uh, why you do this is just to help you um, see and better visualize um, assigning RNS, and you'll see why in a second. So um, step three is to rank the priority groups, right? We're going to do this first chiral center here. Uh, you need to look at the first atom branching off of each group, right? So let's, let's take a look. So we go here, we have a hydrogen, we have a carbon, we have a carbon here, and then we have a nitrogen. Uh, how you assign priority is it's whichever one's the most massive wins the priority. So we know nitrogen's 14 AMUs, carbon's 12, and hydrogen's 1.01. So we're going to give nitrogen priority here because it's the most massive. Uh, and these carbons tie, we'll get to that in just a second. And the hydrogen here is only about 1.01 AMUs, so it's going to get 4. It's significantly less than carbon. Uh, and when we look at carbon, uh, we have a tie here. So how do we break the tie? Uh, well, what we got to do is look at what this carbon's bonded to. Uh, whichever one has a significant group coming off of it that's different, uh, that's what we want to rank. So um, here we have an implied hydrogen, and we have the oxygen, right? So that's the two extra things attached to this uh, carbon here. We come here, it's a carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So because there's that extra carbon here, uh, this group wins, right? And this group gets third priority because it doesn't have that. Uh, so how do we assign R or S? Well, we're going to draw um, going one to two in ascending order, and we're going to see if we go clockwise or counterclockwise. Well, we go one, two, three, four. That's counterclockwise. Um, and you would say that this is S. You would think it's S, actually. Uh, but it's not S, and here's why. So you see the hydrogen here, it's a wedge. Well, when you're assigning R and S, you need to make the fourth priority group a dash, right? That's just how we keep everything relative and we keep our R and S um, 
configuration namings the same for IUPAC. So we actually need to flip this molecule around. And when you do that, instead of the priority groups going in ascending order counterclockwise, it's going to go clockwise. And what does clockwise mean? That means it's R. So this molecule, this chiral center here, this singular chiral center, is going to be R. Doing the same with the next one, we know that oxygen is the most massive because we have carbon, carbon, hydrogen, right? So this um, oxygen, this OH group gets first priority, hydrogen gets four, and that will be the case most of the times. Hydrogen usually gets fourth priority because it's so small. And then going here, we have uh, this, this side of the molecule and that side of the molecule. Well, this one's quite simple. Um, this, this one's attached to a carbon. We count it twice. Important, we count it twice because there's a double bond and we have another carbon that it's attached to. We go the opposite way to the left side. This carbon uh, is bonded to a carbon, a hydrogen, and a nitrogen. Um, and because the nitrogen is that much more uh, massive, right, it's, there's no tie between that, right? Nitrogen is more massive than carbon. We know that. So uh, this will win second priority, and that will win third priority, the one that's bonded to th uh, the two carbons with the double bond, right? So one, two, three, four. Uh, and when we draw how we're ascending, we are going uh, clockwise, right? And we're going to actually keep this configuration because remember what I said, hydrogen needs to be in the back. And uh, this uh, dash here tells us that the hydrogen is in the back, right? So. One, two, three, four. And because it goes like in the clockwise direction, it's R configured. So a summary for this molecule, this step of the problem, is that uh, this chiral center is R and this chiral center is also R. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at Fisher projections. And uh, these are quite simple. Uh, Any time um, we want to identify the chiral centers, we just look at when the vertical line uh, intersects with the horizontal line and we see it's right here here and here so these are our three chiral centers next we want to go one chiral center at a time and assign priority for this video I'll only take into consider one of these chiral centers uh, just for the explanation and then the other two are just going to be the answers if you want to do it on your own or something like that so let's look here so these make it a little bit easier to just kind of see um, the groups that are coming off of each chiral center. I think it's a lot more organized. Uh, so let's look. So we have bromine here. Bromine is about 100 something AMUs, uh, 100 and a lot more, right? So this is definitely going to win. I mean, there's nothing else even in this molecule that is even close to bromine. Uh, let's look here. We have carbon, carbon, carbon. So we have a three way tie. This is quite annoying. Um, well, something that sticks out to me is this section here, um, the aldehyde group that's coming off, right? We know that aldehydes are double bonded um, carbonyls with a hydrogen, right? And we know that this oxygen being double bonded, it's going to count twice. So ox there's two oxygens contributing to this thing's priority. Let's keep that in mind. Here we have carbon that's only bound to hydrogens. That's a bad sign. That says that, you know, it's not going to win the tiebreaker. We, we, we should just automatically assume it's not going to, so it's going to get four. Uh, we're going to go downwards now to this chiral center, um, and you'll see it's bound to a carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, this only has one oxygen contributing, while this chiral center has two. So because of that, because that uh, carbon is carbonyled, you could say, to the oxygen, it's going to win over this chiral center and it's going to get priority too. And as a result, uh, this one still beats this one, right, because there's only hydrogens. This one has an oxygen that makes it the, um, the more prioritized group. So uh, this one gets three and this one gets four. Now we must draw an arrow uh, and we're going to do that. And it goes counterclockwise. Right, um, and there's a there's an interesting rule that you have to remember with Fisher projections. It's not putting the fourth group in the back. You have to understand that um, if the fourth group is in a horizontal position, 
do your normal thing of assigning R and S where you draw the arrow around, see which way it goes clockwise, counterclockwise. Um, assign R and S, but then flip it, right? But if the fourth priority is vertical, you just keep it the same, right? So in this case, we go one, two, skip three, skip two, four, and that's the fastest way to get to each of those groups. Um, so, right, and if we go counterclockwise, that's S, it looks S, but remember, uh, that methyl group is in the horizontal position and it's priority four and therefore we have to flip it so instead of s it's actually r right so hopefully that was pretty thorough and hopefully you understand that and if we do the same to all the rest of these chiral centers we get r for this one right s and s I hope that helped you guys. Uh, I really enjoyed going through this problem, working it out. Uh, so anyways, have a good one, guys.